and um, I ended up co-writing a book and ultimately a film version of that book. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because it's one thing, I mean, when you speak you can say, I heard somewhere that such and such happened and, uh, you know, it, it, I can get away with it. But when I write a book, you have, to do, you have to identify the well you draw your water from. You have to have a bibliography. You have to have notes. And then you have to put your name on it. And so it forced me in a whole nother, on a whole other level to begin to embrace and try to figure what was going on in terms of the racial divide. And what was going on in my own heart, in my own life. Uh, the, the stereotypical thinking that I bump into all the time. Uh, the, the prejudices. And, and even the bigotry that, that, is, that kind of is gurgling around in my own heart. And I began to confront that. And, and, and in writing this book, what happened is it just, it, it brought not, not only the head into the, into the mix, but also the heart. And, and trying to figure out and try to understand. And what happened is, um, is I began to interview in, in, in preparing and writing and researching for this book. I began to interview especially African-American men. Uh, we wanted to write a book that would be spe specifically designed for young men. And we knew the book could not smell white, it could not smell feminine. And uh, some said, well, why don't you write to women? Why don't you write to Asian-Americans and Hispanic, Latino? What about Native American Indians? What? Well, we said, you know, maybe if you've got a desire to do it, why don't you write a book like that? We want to really write a, a book uh, that is specifically targeted because we knew that if it, it had a, a certain, if we had a shotgun approach, we would not have the rifle. We would not, we would miss our target audience. And then some people said, why write a book? Uh, you know, I remember one gentleman, he, an African-American gentleman, he said, you know, if you want to hide something from young men, young African-American men, put it in a book. Uh, once you do it more in a contextualized approach. And we said, no, we just want to put it in a book because we just feel this is very important. And uh, since then, women have loved it. Men over 25 have loved it. Uh, we have a special message for white people in the back to give a flashlight to understand why we wrote it the way we did and why we approach it, approached it in this manner. And so what happened is, uh, you can imagine, uh, uh, the, the, the publisher said, well, start talking to people and giving some ideas. So I began to interview African-American men. And I wanted to talk with men who were, that were at least over 35 years of age, that had some perspective that maybe had worked through some things or, or even come to some sense of, of understanding about things, maybe not even worked through it yet, but could give some real good insight about, about what they're thinking, what they're feeling. And uh, you can imagine, on a suspicion scale, from somewhat suspicious <laughs> to extremely suspicious, we're banging at this end of the scale. You know, here's this, this guy, white guy from Canada coming, wanting to interview African-American men. And I can remember one gentleman, he's over about 65 years of age, a very elegant individual. And he, uh, he and I began to talk and, uh, you know, it's like, what are you doing, son? <laughs> you know, you're writing to who? And, you know, it just became a very interesting conversation. And what happened is I asked a question. A question that changed the tone of that entire interview and each subsequent interview that took us from our ob obligatory 45 minutes to about six to eight hours in some ways. And sometimes took our conversations to such a, a depth and such a width that we ended up crying together, hugging each other, and, and, and keeping in touch as, as years went by. Do you want to hear that question? Okay. <laughs> Do you remember the moment when you realized that because of the color of your skin, the rules are somehow different for you? Mm -hmm. To have that 65-year-old gentleman pause, look out the window, look back at me, and then tell me, tell me with brilliant clarity what happened when he was six years of age. Ladies and gentlemen, I can remember that as if it just happened yesterday. I mean, this gentleman knew, and I could tell it was coming from very deep within. In fact, later on he told me, he said, I've never really even thought of this. I never even put two and two together, let alone share something like this with another person. He knew the color of the car. He remembered that what time of day it was, what he was wearing, what the weather was like. It all was was so real to him as he shared it with me. 
And as I began to ask this same question of other gentlemen, the stories that they told me, I'll tell you, it, it just made such an impact on me. It's hard to put into words. There's a poem by Count T. Cullen from the Harlem Renaissance. He calls it the incident. I'd like to call it the moment. Once riding in old Baltimore, heart filled, head filled with glee. I saw a Baltimore kept looking straight at me. Now I was eight and very small and he was no whit bigger. And so I smiled, but he poked out his tongue and called me nigger. I saw the whole of Baltimore from May until December of all the things that happened there. That's all that I remember.